Coming up today, North Korea test fires a submarine launched ballistic missile from its east coast in retaliation against large scale South Korea US military exercises. The missile came down inside Japan's sea zone. North Korea has reportedly ordered its ambassador to the UK back to Pyongyang after a high level official from the North Embassy in London defected to South Korea. First Team Korea's victorious Olympians have returned to Korea from Rio amid joyous celebrations from family and friends. The nation finished eighth in the medal standing, scooping nine gold. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Wednesday, the 24th of August. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Arirang TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. We are going to start with that news of yet another provocation by North Korea. The regime has again test-fired a ballistic missile from a submarine in defiance of an international ban. The South Korean military says the launch was an armed protest against joint military drills between South Korea and the U.S., which started earlier this week. Our Defence Ministry correspondent Kim Hyun-bin starts us off. South Korea's defense ministry on Wednesday said that North Korea fired off a submarine launch ballistic missile that flew some 500 kilometers before falling into the East Sea. The SABN was fired Wednesday morning from a submarine in waters off the eastern city of Shinpo. Officials added that the missile breached Japan's air defense identification zone by about 80 kilometers. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says the launch is a clear violation of UN Security Council resolutions that banned the North from conducting these kinds of tests. Officials believe the firing was an armed protest against the annual South Korea-U.S. military exercise known as Urgi Freedom Guardian, which started on Monday. North Korea, which had earlier threatened to retaliate, sees the exercise as a rehearsal for a northward invasion, while Seoul and Washington insist the drills are purely defensive in nature. The South Korean military says North Korea has made improvements in terms of its SABM technology compared to previous launches, adding that an SABM that flies more than 300 kilometers can be deemed a success. Officials say the military will remain on high alert and is ready to counter any further provocations. North Korea's SABN development poses an extra threat to regional stability and South Korea's national security, as the missiles are practically impossible to detect before launch. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. South Korea's presidential office of Chongwa Day convened a National Security Council meeting a matter of hours after North Korea's missile launch. The South Korean government condemned Pyongyang for violating UN Security Council resolutions yet again. Let's take a look at what a foreign ministry spokesperson had to say. The South Korean government urges North Korea to immediately stop its nuclear and missile development program, which threatens peace and security on the Korean peninsula and in the world. We urge North Korea to abolish its nuclear program in a completely irrevocable and verifiable way. In cooperation with the international community, we will do all we can to impose practical sanctions and pressure on North Korea. Seoul warned that Pyongyang's actions to advance its weapons development disregard the human rights of its citizens and depress its people's livelihoods and will only accelerate its own self-destruction as it will lead to further isolation and stronger punishment from the outside world. South Korea also vowed to maintain full defence readiness and take countermeasures in response to any further provocations from the north. Now, North Korea's missile launch will add an extra sense of urgency to talks in Tokyo between the foreign ministers of South Korea, Japan and China, which are taking place as we speak. But while the threats posed by Pyongyang are high on the agenda, the three sides also have their own thorny issues to deal with. Gwon Soa with the details. South Korea's Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se, as well as his Japanese and Chinese counterparts Fumio Kishida and Wang Yi, are expected to see eye to eye on the importance of cooperation in handling North Korea's continual nuclear and missile provocations during their trilateral meeting in Tokyo. The talks come at a time of elevated tension in the Northeast Asia region and beyond. China needs countries on its side in the ongoing South China Sea dispute. Beijing and Tokyo remain locked in a bitter territorial dispute over a group of islands in the East China Sea and Seoul and Beijing are at loggerheads over South Korea's decision to deploy the U.S. missile defense system THAAD to the Korean peninsula. 
In an apparent reference to these matters prior to departing for Tokyo, Minister Yoon told reporters the talks are happening at a very important time. Unlike the previous meeting in Seoul last year, a joint press statement will not be adopted this time, according to Seoul's foreign ministry, as the officials have a lot of issues to cover in a short amount of time and thorough discussions haven't been held on the matter. On the sidelines, South Korea and Japan are expected to take another step in the implementation of the landmark deal on Japan's wartime sexual slavery. This, as Japan's cabinet confirmed on Wednesday, a roughly 10 million U.S. dollar cash transfer to a Seoul-based foundation for the Korean victims. According to Tokyo-based Kyoto News Agency, the transfer does not need to undergo parliamentary deliberation. The decision is expected to be delivered to Korea's foreign minister by his Japanese counterpart during a one-on-one -on -one in the afternoon. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Now, while the foreign ministers of the three countries hold their meeting on regional security issues, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has strongly denounced North Korea's SLBM launch, which breached Japan's air defense identification zone, as we heard in that earlier report. Japan's Kyoto News Agency reports that Abe called it, quote, intolerable violence that poses a grave threat to regional security, end quote. He also echoed the South Korean government's response, saying Japan will firmly deal with North Korea in close collaboration with the international community. Pyongyang is further tightening its controls of its citizens in the wake of the recent defection by a senior North Korean diplomat. The North has stepped up inspections of overseas offices and tightened surveillance along the border with China. Oh jong has the details. North Korea's ambassador to Britain has reportedly been called back to Pyongyang, citing unnamed diplomatic sources. Seoul based enough news agency reports that Hyunak Bong has been instructed to return to North Korea. The report also says a replacement has been designated. It is believed the official is being recalled to face questions about the recent defection to South Korea by Taeyong Ho, the second highest official at North Korea's mission in London. To prevent future defections, the regime is reportedly tightening inspections of its overseas diplomatic offices and traders. Sources say that diplomats and liaisons who have been out of North Korea for over four years will be subject to more stringent inspections. The inspections are aimed at determining whether officials overseas have paid tributes to the regime and how much, thereby proving their loyalty, and whether officials have made any attempts to escape. Officials seen as likely to defect could be called back to North Korea. Officials in Pyongyang are also under investigation to determine if they've mismanaged the officials overseas. North Korean authorities have also strengthened their surveillance along the North Korea-China border and are carrying out daily ideological education sessions for residents living nearby to prevent defections. Smugglers on the border have been told to report citizens attempting to cross the river to the state security department officials under threat of punishment. This has resulted in the arrest of dozens of North Koreans who have attempted to defect. There is growing speculation the recent activity, which comes amid North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's attempt to intensify his reign of terror, could result in harsh punishments or an extensive purge. Oh Jong-hee, Arirang News. It's now day three of the 49th annual Ulchi Freedom Guardian military exercise between South Korea and the United States. Officials say Wednesday's exercise is designed to focus on countering hypothetical airstrikes by North Korea's special forces in the West Sea. The drill will prepare troops to swiftly detect movements and neutralize the enemy. The Ulchi Freedom Guardian exercise is held to enhance the Allies' readiness and protect the region amid the rising military threat posed by North Korea. The training exercise involves tens of thousands of South Korean and American forces, and it's set to last two weeks. Now, in domestic politics, the ruling Senuri Party and the government have agreed to increase next year's budget by roughly 3%. The biggest increase will be for job creation efforts, benefiting young people and senior citizens. The amount for job creation as a whole will increase by more than 10%, while the line for youth job creation will rise more than 15% to roughly 2.35 billion US dollars. The culture, sports and agriculture sectors will also see sizable increases. 
Finance Minister Yuel Ho, who was also at the meeting, urged the National Assembly to pass a pending bill outlining a multi-billion dollar supplementary budget for this year. He said the budget should be processed before the Chuseok holiday next month to bring about the maximum benefit to the economy in the second half. South Korea is set to decide Wednesday on whether to allow Google to export government-supplied map data outside of the country. The Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport, which supervises the nation's mapping policy, will hold talks with officials from the foreign, defence and other related ministries before announcing its decision. Google says the map it wants is the one used in SK Telecom's navigation service called T-Map, and has been certified for security. It says it needs the map to distribute the popular augmented reality game Pokemon Go. Until now, the Defence Ministry has been opposed to the idea. It says that when combined with Google Map, sensitive security facilities could be exposed. Local telecom firms are also against the idea. They say Google wants to undermine the domestic market and is trying to export the map in a bid to evade taxes. Now, South Korea and China are marking almost a quarter of a century of diplomatic ties. And over that period, the countries have made significant progress in a number of areas. In this special report, we are going to take a look at the, the past, present and future of Seoul-Beijing ties. Here's Huang Jie. At this duty-free shop in Seoul, seven out of ten customers are Chinese who are avid fans of South Korean cosmetics. So it comes as no surprise there is a whole floor dedicated to these best-selling items. Korean cosmetics are really nice. They're easy to use, and for the price, the quality is really good as well. The growing influx of Chinese tourists has certainly opened new growth opportunities for the domestic service and tourism sectors, to mention a few. But it's not just within the local market that South Korean businesses are striving. Over in China, South Korean firms are bolstering efforts to penetrate the market using the Korean wave or Hallyu as a firm foothold. And to take advantage of the growing demand of this market of 1.3 billion, roughly 20,000 South Korean companies are doing business here in China. South Korea is also a crucial economic partner for China due to a tight-knit web of production. Seoul exports intermediary goods to the neighboring market, which are then used to produce final products. With that, South Korea is China's largest source of imports. While much emphasis has been put on cultivating economic ties between Seoul and Beijing since relations were established more than two decades ago, the need for a stronger strategic partnership is also gaining greater attention than ever due to the ongoing military provocations from Pyongyang. But Seoul's decision last month to deploy the U.S. missile defense system THAAD to the Korean peninsula has put a dent in the South Korea-China partnership, heightening concerns that the issue could even have an impact on bilateral economic ties. It's now the time for South Korea to really focus on public diplomacy with the Chinese people. If we continue to see hostility between the two countries, it will be hard to mend ties. Experts point out that Seoul should work to keep the steady stream of cultural exchanges with Beijing alive in order to build on the 24 years that the two nations have already cemented. Huang Jie, Arirang News, Shanghai. Now, Korea's national Olympic team has arrived back home after a proud showing at the 2016 Rio Olympics. They achieved their goal of finishing in the top 10 of the medal standings, but fell just one solitary gold short of their 10 gold medal target. Uh, Shin Se Min reports from Incheon International Airport. Proudly walking in with Korea's national flag, the final group of Team Korea's Olympic heroes returned home on Wednesday, finishing up their 17-day sporting journey in Rio. 
The group, comprised of 70 athletes and a number of team delegates, was welcomed with warm cheers and hugs from their family members and friends. Taking center stage was a ceremony officially disbanding the squad. Korea's Minister of Culture, Tourism and Sports Kim Jong-duk thanked all the athletes and the support staff for their stellar efforts in Brazil. We as a nation are so proud of all of you. Your efforts in Rio in the face of challenging conditions and security concerns brought the Korean people so much joy and excitement. All our athletes showed great sportsmanship and competed in the events fairly. Korea's rhythmic gymnast star Son yeon who fell short winning a medal in Rio, said she will take a break to take stock of her future options. I have no regrets as I performed to the best of my abilities in Rio. I'm going to take some time off to decide what I want to do next. And previous health concerns over the Zika virus seemed to have evaporated. Korea's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says there haven't been any confirmed or suspected cases of Zika among the almost 1,000 strong Korean delegation. It said the government and related health authorities will continue to closely monitor the members of the delegation over the next couple of weeks just to make sure there are no issues. The focus is now on the sporting stars of the snow and ice as they shoot for medals at the 2018 Winter Olympics, which will be held in Korea's alpine town of Pyeongchang. Shin Se-min, Arirang News, Incheon. Well, those are the stories we have for you at this hour. We'll have more reaction to North Korea's latest ballistic missile launch throughout the day. For more on that and the rest of the day's news, don't forget to check out the website arirang.com forward slash news. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.